Hello, everyone. This is Adlan Fela, Chief Analyst at Maravitis Research. It is my pleasure today to welcome Ed Fox, CTO at Medtel. Hello, Ed. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm happy excellent. to be here. It's great to meet you, and it's great to have you guys in our show. Can you tell us who is Medtel? What does your company do and what services do you provide? Sure. So Mattel's about a 30-year-old communication solutions company. We only sell to business and enterprise as well as government. And we're focused on the communications piece. So just about everything that we deploy is a managed service. We ha you, you name a communications product and we have it in our portfolio. Everything still from, believe it or not, plain old telephone lines, all the way up to big, massive global manage networks for very large customers, as well as uh, mobility that we do for enterprise and government. And also on the, the other side of that, those POTS services is, a, is a, a product maybe I'll talk about later, but it's called POTS Transformation. And that's one of our fastest growing products. So we, we have about 5,000, a little over 5,000 uh, enterprises and governments as customers. And we're We're really good at the multi-location enterprise. Okay, great. Thank you. What's something unique about your company? Uh, sure. You know, internally, we always joke that we're the only company that answers the phone. So it's, our, it's our service is, yes, and our service is really unique. So we pride ourselves on that. On that. I think another unique thing for us is that, you know, we've been employing AI back when it was unsexily called machine learning, you know, all the way back in 2016, 2017. So we have a we have a pretty big platform today uh, that wins us a lot of awards and Gartner accolades, as a matter of fact, that takes a bunch of machine learning algorithms, it nests them in a bunch of uh, automation, I'll call it like RPA in, in the old day, and iterates, particularly in our, our incident management sector. So we've We've basically had, I call it agentic AI way back when, because we have agents that sit and work in our queues, in our incident queues, for example, and customer service queues that work on things in parallel with, with our humans. Okay, that, that sounds great. Hello, everyone. This is Adlan Fila. I'm a chief research analyst at Maravidis. Maravidis is a boutique wireless infrastructure analyst firm since 2002. Over the last two decades, we have been helping customers with research, consulting, and marketing services. Some of the areas we cover include the conversions of Wi-Fi and cellular. In fact, we're known for our longstanding relationship with the Wireless Broadband Alliance, for which we have produced the industry annual report. We have three ways to work with us, from marketing essentials for startups to custom large custom projects. We can discuss those projects individually. And those are some of the customers we have helped in the past. So feel free to reach out to us to further discuss your research needs. Thank you. Now, I see that you serve a number of markets and verticals that are very different, I mean, from retail to healthcare and manufacturing and transportation, which are the ones that are you, are you most excited about? That's a good question. So we, you're right. We're really good, good at multi-location enterprise, anywhere from, you know, probably a sweet spot, like 30 locations, all the way up to thousands and thousands of locations. But what, where, we're, where we've been most excited about recently is we have this transformation product that's really helping our really big customers and governments take their their life safety lines. So those that are connected to the fire alarm, the burger alarm, elevator lines, those type of thing. And it's a, it's a purpose-built product that's also an, a router and a fixed wireless access device. And it takes, we can take those, those specialty lines and we can ensure that those protocols, those really old protocols are being, are being kept as they're being put over the new network. You know, so when they get digitized, they don't get broken. So that, that's one of the most exciting pieces for us. Uh, and that's across all verticals. Of course, it's a lot of retail. It's a lot of financial. It's a lot of oil and gas. It's a lot on the, on the, the government side as well. You know, they, they're one of the ones that are, that are not as quick to move off some of that really old technology. And I, you know, we're excited about helping them with this product. Yeah.
That's great. And now you're the CTO. Tell us about some of your biggest technical challenges. Yeah, sure. So, I mean, I think from, from a business perspective, I think just keeping up with our growth, you know, we've, we've grown double digits, I think it's 17 or 18 years in a row at this point. So keeping up with that growth and making sure that we can follow up with new solutions that customers are asking for with enough automation. And trying to do that all without, you know, going through the, the pains and efforts of adding more and more people, but trying to keep it, keep us lean and more automated. We have a great group of people in the company today. And, you know, per like our, our ratio to employees, to customers is, is phenomenal. And just keeping up with that pace, that, that's one of, that's, that is by far my biggest challenge. And then, you know, I think overall, you know, you know, the CTO's job is not just, he's not the technical guy anymore or she for the whole organization. Everyone's got to be, you know, with how much is changing and so fast, uh, you know, it's almost like we have to have an analyst and developer in every single department to keep up with what, what your, with the capabilities that you can do today. So I think just keeping up with that is, is the, is one, one of my hardest jobs. And then the other hardest job is just keeping up with what customers want. You know, they, they see things out on, out on the internet and, you know, marketing stuff. And we always, you know, we're, we're in a lot of cases with our biggest clients, we act as, you know, like their advisor, their trusted advisor in the communication space. So I'm always out there, you know, looking at all these new technologies, listening to them, kind of, kind of figuring out what's going to be good for my customers and, and what's, you know, what's not, or having that experience behind all these different technologies and listening to a customer and, and making the puzzle pieces fit. That's become harder and harder. Interesting. You're a technology curator for, for your customers right. then. Yeah, for sure. Continuing our technology discussion, you know, there's, you know, you have a network with different hardware vendors and solution vendors, and especially Wi-Fi, you know, they're all kind of inter vertically integrated, but you get locked into each vendor. What's the view of your position in terms of Wi-Fi vendor lock-in and how things could be different. Yeah, so we have a pretty unique view on the Wi-Fi vendor lock-in piece of it. So we we attempt to keep a small stable of vendors, I'll call it, that we offer as a service, you know, as a managed service. Just for the simple fact of what, what I mentioned before, we, we really like to automate as much as we possibly can and train our group on being technology advisors, right, for our customers. But being a solutions provider, we, we get, you know, we'll take on different networks and different vendors. So although we prefer to stay with a few so we can optimize those, we actually manage many, many different vendors. The neat thing is that, you know, a lot of our, our, our folks are very technology savvy, so they can figure these out right away. But we just can't provide the automated value for our customers on the customer service side and client service side for all of them, you know, we have to, we have to focus on a few, you know, even as far as, you know, a lot of our retail customers. So I mentioned that we do multi-location enterprise. So we do a lot of, a lot of retail, right? And a lot of retail, you know, they, they just want one AP in small stores. So we end up, you know, managing Wi-Fi that comes out of a fixed wireless access device or another router. So, we do our best to manage all those, and as it as it gets to you know a certain level of volume, then we really start to get the development team focused and start to automate those. So mm -hmm. we we, we kind of have a plan, but we always can't always stick to the plan because we're a solutions provider. Okay, I would have assumed that as a retailer, you they'll have to use whatever hardware you provide them. Yeah, when they're buying it from us, yes. Yep. Okay. Now let's talk about the big topic of. Wi-Fi, cellular convergence, you know, organizations like the WBA and others are working to make that experience seamless, I guess, between yeah. more Wi-Fi, outdoor cellular and vice versa. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so so we're really excited about what the WBA is doing, particularly with the GSMA and the 3G discussions. You know, we, we mobility is probably our second fastest growing piece of our business. We do a lot of fixed wireless access. We do a lot of mobility. We also do a lot of IoT, and we do that as a managed service. So we're, we're and we're on the cusp of actually deploying and launching our our own mobile core that's starting out in North America and will grow globally. So we're really excited about the 
you know, the marriage or the authentication, at least marriage of, you know, the, the, the macro cellular network and the Wi-Fi networks. We are looking closely at and, and do are involved in some CBRS projects and private LTE and private 5G today. And, you know, I, I think, you know, the recent news that came out of the, the big, beautiful bill that CBRS is not protected anymore. I think that may actually help us in the WBA actually, you know, focus a little bit more, get a little bit more attention to what the WBA is trying to do with GSMA. Because I think with the coming of particularly what what's, we're predicting for Wi-Fi 8 and what's happened with Wi-Fi 7, I think those networks are becoming more and more analogous to each other just on different frequencies and with different authentication mechanisms. And I think if we can bring that together, I think, you know, for service providers like us, we can provide a unified service to our customers, whether they're, you know, in their in their truck depot or out in the wild and, you know, in the middle of nowhere. And we could have our single SIM choose the best carrier or the only carrier. Mm-hmm. And if you add on to that, what we're seeing with, uh, you know, with the direct to device space, I, I think we can, we have a, you know, we're, we're a, we're a partner with Starlink as well. And, you know, that the, all that authenticating through a EP mechanism, I think is going to be super powerful. And I think we're one of the companies that can bring that together for, an enterprise. That's exciting. Which of the current verticals you're serving would be a good candidate for that new mobile core? So we provide it as a single SIM today. So it's everyone that's looking for to get away from, oh, I don't have Verizon coverage in this area, or I don't have AT&T coverage in this area, or I don't have T-Mobile coverage in this area, and I'm one of those customers. Anyone who's looking to go in between the best possible signal, that, that's where this fits. So, for example, we provide this to a, one of the biggest waste companies in the world for their trucks and their tablets. Cities like the like like Phoenix, all their water trucks, for example, use that because they they get their you know their work schedules and their maps and everything over their tablets when they finish jobs. And they used to have to pull over and try to get Wi-Fi and try a hotspot. And now with the, with the single SIM that we we deploy, they can just roam between carriers. So for those type of verticals, even oil and gas, you know, and as as the cost comes down to that, it, it, it can proliferate into even fixed wireless access devices. That's what we expect pretty soon. Okay, great. Last but not least, you know, if you had a magic wand, what tech or service would you to become more successful? <laughs> I mean, I, I think the one I, I was describing between, you know, all the way from, you know, satellite communications to mobile network to Wi-Fi, I think that's one. For sure, I think we can be really successful with that. Probably the, the the easiest and the most boring answer is probably AI everywhere. And I think I mentioned that. But I will say that you know, if I had, if I could wave a magic wand, I think what I'd like to be, what I'd like Metel to be, is faster and quicker in developing new secure cybersecurity products. I think that space is also changing so quickly. Uh, you see it every day. And, you know, us being the heart of a lot of enterprise and government networks, I think there's more and more we can do. And, th- and that's kind of what we're working towards. The magic wand would help me do it much easier and quicker. So that, that's what I would wish for. Yeah. So secure, secure co- connectivity, I guess. All right. Yeah. Well, thanks very much for sharing your insights. This was a wonderful discussion. Please like, subscribe and share this content with your folks. And until the next episode. Thank you very much, Eddie. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you.